Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional league, dynasty league, PPR league, IDP league, IDP league, even daily fantasy football league. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast on the GSMC Podcast Network. I am their host, Ethan Orfe, as I am every Friday, and we're going to have a nice little little gentle discussion today about some few topics, some things I want to touch on, and some things that uh maybe I need to think about more. So, uh first things first, we got to talk about what just occurred, of course, the Super Bowl happened a few days ago, Sunday. Patrick Mahomes and the gang went down there and won it in Miami in in I guess spectacular fashion. I wouldn't I don't know if it was spectacular. The game honestly, I don't know if it was that good. It was uh quite boring for the most part on um, as far as the game I was watching, I mean it looked like the forty ers defense and their the offensive game plan for the first Two and, well, the first quarter and some change was on a master class, right? The greatest thing I've ever seen as far as scheme and they just shut down Mahomes and they still shut down Mahomes for the most part throughout the first three and a half quarter, three and some change. And then uh, Mahomes caught fire, man, in the fourth with six minutes left and he was able to make some plays. Now, he didn't have a great game, but... Uh, I mean, only fantasy people, or not fantasy people, but only real, real nerds, people who really care about the game are going to care about the first three and a half quarters because it really was not good. And if he didn't have that, that comeback, there'd be a lot of more questions than, uh, than answers, of course. And, but the greats do things like that. They can have a bad game and they'll come back and they'll be stronger and, or they won't, they'll have a bad game within the game and then they'll turn it around and just turn it on and be able to catch fire. And that's how you know Patrick Mahomes is, uh, one of the best guys out there, you know. In the fantasy season, I had him in one of my leagues and, you know, I knew Patrick Mahomes was good. I felt like he was the best quarterback in the league. I took him. I thought the fantasy season would be a lot better than what it turned out to be for me in that league. But that is a digression from, just the general greatness that he is, you know, fantasy doesn't tell the whole story. You know, there's injuries, there's a lot of other things going on that, and of course you can't expect somebody who has a monumental, a, a explosion of a first year starter season and to come back and do the same thing. It's just really not possible. The records he was breaking, the pace that they were scoring, it was just not, it was never going to be possible to keep back up. So um, you kind of just had to take what you can get and what you got was when he did play and he was, he was good. He was good version of himself. He was the, still the best quarterback in the league and one of the best that you can have in fantasy. It's just that sometimes the streaks came in weird times and, uh, you know, weird moments that you would rather have back with somebody else in the forefront rather than Patrick Mahomes. And that's just, you know, that's fantasy. It's part of the gamble. You know, uh, famous words from an artist I can't remember. I know, uh, Big Crit sampled him back in the day, but, uh, life is a gamble. <laughs> Either you win or you lose. <laughs> but, um, speaking of life and a gamble in fantasy football and football in general. So let's make this full circle, right? Uh, I want to talk about some of my, 
some of the memories of this last season and just thinking about some of the the more interesting storylines that really transpired because I think we consume football so fast. We eat it. We eat all the news, all the news cycles, 24 hours, and then something else comes up and then 24 hours and something else comes up and we get into this, uh, cycle for lack of a better term, uh, until we end the season. And then we just really don't look back at things unless they overlap into the new season. So say if it's somebody who is expecting free agency, of course, that's going to overlap into the free agency, into new things or in the new season. But, um, other than that, sometimes things are lost. Like, uh, you know, or it just gets turned into new content in a different way and it's not talked about in the same way. So, um, for instance, I think for this season, um, it's already kind of diminishing. I assume when the free agency picks back up, it'll come back. But, uh, the Jameis 30 for 30 thing is still, it's, it's crazier than what you really think it should be. Like, I think we're kind of, uh, we're kind of, mm, I want, I don't want to say we're desensitized to, to something like this to where James Winston can throw 30 touchdowns, but also have a handful of 30 picks. <laughs> but, um, if you look at it from this, this perspective, that's just never been done before. And not to mention, no one really thought James Winston would be in the, would be a guy who throws for, 30 plus touchdowns. He didn't show that the year before, you know, his off the field antics, his, his questionable leadership tactics with the licking of the finger. It just looked like a character. Like, you know, he didn't look like he was a guy who was going to be able to really produce offensively at a, at a high enough level to make you question if he was going to still be in Tampa Bay next year. Then all of a sudden, you know, he, he has the meanest hot and cold streak ever recorded as a quarterback in football as far as touchdowns and interceptions are concerned. And that team is really talented, right? If he doesn't, if he has half the interceptions, of course that team is a playoff team. And it's really, they're a really good team too. Now granted, they did get hurt. The wide receivers got hurt down the stretch and uh, they probably wouldn't have made it too far. But they got some talent there in Tampa Bay. And I don't know if they're going to keep him or not. You know, that's just, we'll see in the future. But they're going to be, do nothing but build with Bruce Arians and see what, uh, see what happens. But, uh, you know, Bruce Arians has some of the health issues that he's had in recent times. So I don't know if he wants to keep James Winston around because he might cause more stress on that man <laughs> rather than, rather than calmness. But, um, that's one. I think another one that a lot of people, um, kind of threw under the rug was the Melvin Gordon uh holdout that really uh showed two things for me. Uh Austin Eckler is a good player, which we I think anybody who had him in fantasy last year kinda knew that uh the Chargers were kinda sitting on some running backs that had some talent because Melvin Gordon got hurt last year and Austin Eckler stepped up in a big way. But then uh, number two is just the, the depth at the, at the running back position and just how, how these guys come in the league ready to do it all kind of devalues their, the, the running back, uh, I guess pool in the NFL is kind of saturated in talent to a certain aspect. Uh, the bar is very low for a usable running back. If you can, and if you can catch out the backfield, you can run a few routes. Um, you really, really have a chance in the league. However, you know, the life cycle of running backs is not long. And, um, unless you're like up the upper echelon top tier, you're not going to see the top dollar. And even they have to fight tooth and nail for the top dollar, as you saw Melvin Gordon try to do. And it just didn't work out for him. So he had to come back, play during the season, and we'll just see what happens now. And impending free agency as, of course, we'll have people like Derrick Henry also involved in free agency. So we're just going to have to wait and see exactly what's going to happen, who's going to set the precedent again, because I don't think anybody's going to pay 
a running back 90 million like the Cowboys did for Zeke. And I think they regretted it quite so much in the season. Uh, it took a while for Zeke to get going. Even then, uh, running backs are like buying cars. Uh, eventually their value will depreciate as soon as they leave the lot. <laughs> I guess, um, that was my best analogy I could think of, but you know, running backs don't last long, just like vehicles. They don't last long all the time unless you take care of them. And even then their value depreciates drastically over time. Once they get over, uh, over 30, the value just starts going downhill. And, you know, once you get over, uh, uh, it's like the equivalent of going, what? 90, 90,000 miles, a hundred, hundred thousand miles. That's when things start to, start to look, look different, <laughs> I should say. Um, but, uh, we're gonna take a break and then I'm gonna come back. And when I come out of the break, we're gonna talk about things you need to do for fantasy season 2020 through 2021. Uh, I got three things for you coming up. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. What are things you need to do for fantasy season 2020, 2021? I guess 2021 fantasy season. Um, this is more so for standard if you do your draft and you draft. This is not really daily fantasy oriented. This is more uh, for people who draft a new team every year. You know, standard uh, traditional fantasy football stuff. So... First thing on the list that you need to do, this is for if you want to improve yourself, if you want to have an edge against the people you're playing with. So say you're in a work league and you know half of those guys barely watch the NFL. They just want to do it for the social aspect. The other half are, you know, they know the stars, but they don't really know the the ins and outs of fantasy football or they don't really study the guys who are going to take them over the top or they're not the waiver wire junkies or the... The guys that really, really, really dive into it. Then if you want to take it over the top, especially if there's, you know, some, some moolah, some money involved, this is what you need to do. Number one, always pay attention to NFL news all, all off season long and write it down. Write, write them down. I started doing this. I started writing notes. I put them in a fantasy football folder, write them notes. Write stuff down when you see it because everything affects something when something happens. So, and more specifically, pay attention to off-season moves. So, we're going to get to the point to where free agency is going to happen. And free agency is a big time in the NFL. Of course, people move, people get signed. A lot of skill position guys end up going to either re-sign to their teams to bigger deals or find other deals to go to. And, I mean, in the NFL, it's happened more so now than it used to. But, you know, the trade deadline or the trade trade window has been a bit more active in recent time, too. But free agency is the big cash pot. That's where, uh, you know, Bleacher Report and uh, ESPN... The graphic designers start getting frisky, putting new jerseys on teams, 
for guys who's never fit in that jersey before. And, you know, it's a fun time for everybody in sports involved. And it's more imperative to look at who is going where and where is who is going to what and what's happening to different teams and what teams and GMs front offices are doing and their focal point, uh, you know, for the next season. So let's say we went in the time machine. And we noticed that the Miami Dolphins were trading away Laramie Tunzel for some picks. And immediately, and they get away, uh, and they get off of Kenyon Drake. The first thing you should really think about is, oh man, this team is not trying to be good. (laughs) And of course, you might have to be hesitant on Miami players because no one predicted that um, for two things. No one predicted that Kenyon Drake was going to be as good on a different team. So, and people have been Kenyon Drake supporters and believers for years and it hasn't worked out this year. It was a revelation. People were jumping for joy, uh, kissing babies, popping bottles, whatever they did to celebrate, you know, it was all over the place. And at the end of the day, a lot of Miami players, uh, Preston Williams, um, the new, I guess he had a stronger end of the season than he did at the top of the season, but, um, their number, their new number one wide receiver, Devontae Parker. He, uh, you couldn't have predicted that he was going to get that good. Now he, somebody I've always kind of wondered, he sits on waiver wires all the time in 12 man, 10 man leagues in recent time, just because we know he had the size and the talent, but it just never worked out because Miami quarterback issues, you know, hurt quarterbacks, quarterbacks who just aren't that good. Um, you know, it's just all the, all the rage in Miami when it comes to quarterbacks. You never know what you're going to get. A box of chocolates, if you will. Next thing, I guess is more on the news kind of, kind of realm, but draft news. And by draft news, I mean who is going in the first two to three rounds of the NFL draft. And it's not necessarily to know for like, if you're in dynasty league is more important. However, if it's for just standard drafting everybody and anybody, you need to know who are going to be the insta starters, the studs, the sleepers who are going to do things in training camp and things like that. You need to be familiar with names that you see in the draft. I'm not saying you have to go full on be a scout and start watching film, start watching tape on these guys. But if you really, if you're in a big money league, you might have already started doing this anyway, or guys in there are probably doing it who are, who are serious, who are basically armchair GMs. And they want to be as successful as possible and they need all the edge they can get. So the draft combine, very important because you find sleepers there or teams rather find sleepers that they do draft. And then in training camp and then mini camp and all that stuff, they start to really show some things. Then you're going to see a flash. You're going to see the thing that I saw months ago. Here's a, here's a small little story. I remember I was at home. Uh, I was probably playing 2K, <laughs> NBA 2K, and my phone goes off, an ESPN alert about, uh, you know, some star guys to really look out for. And I remember uh, seeing the Kansas City Chiefs. They went and picked up a guy in the third round, and the fantasy community was going crazy. Um, and that guy happened to be Kareem Hunt and they were saying that he's having an excellent training camp. Uh, the off season workouts are going well. He's projected to possibly be the starter. And then Spencer Ware was not able to go. I had him, I drafted him and I put him in the starting lineup. People were like, who is this guy? What are you doing? How could you do this? He dropped 50. I believe, or like 48 or something like that on the Patriots game one. It was a, it was a beautiful day 
to say the least. Um, so I'll be completely honest. Don't know if that'll ever happen to me again, but, uh, that's just the sort of stuff that you can do that can take you over the edge and looking at draft notes and just keeping up with the news. It's just so important. Uh, finally, real quickly, uh, creating a draft spreadsheet. Now you don't have to, there's plenty of spreadsheets online that you can go out there and take and, uh, download and use, but a spreadsheet that especially one that you can search through and type in numbers and seedings and when people draft who and to see who are the best available left from last season projections and numbers, it changes how fantasy works for you. It can be more efficient. Um, you can be able to keep up who's on and off the board, who guys are projected to do this, that, and the third. And it's just, it's excellent, honestly. It's spreadsheets, find them online. Um, Excel, uh, I don't think they really do Google, Google spreadsheets like that or Google sheets, but Excel sheets for fantasy football are the bee's knees. You just got to try it out. I'm telling you right now. All right, so let's review the three. Pay attention to off-season moves. Pay extremely close attention to draft, to new drafted players or draftees and watch training camps and look at the training camp news, maybe even hard knocks if you have HBO. Sometimes you may find some guys in there, very rarely, but you never know. And then, of course, Find a spreadsheet or create your own in Excel or Google Sheets. Saves the day all the time. All right, so I'm going to take another break. And coming out of it, we're going to talk about fantasy free agents to look out for. As you know, fantasy football never stops here at the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. So looking at the free agency list from, I guess, skill position for a fantasy perspective, you know, we got to start at the running backs, the bell cows, the money makers, the big time movers and shakers, <laughs> the running backs. So top of the list, we got a couple big names here and a few, few uh, familiar names, but uh, not for not for the reasons we'd like them to. Derrick Henry, big name. So remember how earlier we were talking about Ezekiel Elliott making ninety million. Derrick Henry, twenty six years of age, is a unrestricted free agent. So somebody, somebody's gonna gonna pay for him, right? I don't know who. It you would think it's gonna be Tennessee. You know their whole offense is revolved around Derrick Henry. Being a man and getting down there and doing what he does and dragging people down and running a four or five that looks like a, a linebacker running a four or five, but his acceleration makes it even faster and, you know, trucking people and calling people small, wearing all white suits and such, you know, that Derrick Henry. Yeah, he's going to be a problem. I don't know where he's going to go. Uh, I guess. Well, I could assume that he's going to go back to Tennessee. They're going to sign him to a longer contract and spend that money on him because he's just that type of back. And he proved it in the playoffs, you know, toughest place to play, toughest place to run the football. You know, the playoffs is a running 
as a running game style of uh, league. It's no longer super pass happy. It's harder to do. So that is a positive sign that, you know, he can get it done what it needs to be done. Um, maybe he can be the new Marshawn in a sense, uh, a replacement, a faster, a bigger Marshawn. <laughs> But you can't really just replace Marshawn because, you know, it's a different mentality, a different level of running. But, uh, you know, similar styles, similar styles. Next, uh, a fan favorite of mine, a guy that I that I trusted in. And he brought me to a lot of good fantasy wins over the last season and some change. Austin Eckler, Austin Eckler. So this uh You know, originally thought to be a third down type of back, but in reality, he is an all-purpose back, and he can be a starter for you, and he proved it in four games without Melvin Gordon. He averaged 26 fantasy points, almost 27. He was phenomenal. I loved Austin Eckler. I still do. Honestly, if he if he's around at the time where I can pick him up and Melvin Gordon is not on the team that he is on, Best believe, first round pick all day. I'm doing it. Pulling the trigger. He has yet to fail me. And honestly, I'm not afraid of whatever the card or the Chargers quarterback situation is because I feel like Austin Eckler is a safe pickup. Speaking of the Chargers, Melvin Gordon is obviously next on the list that you should be looking at is just because the I don't think he'll be back because it just didn't seem like he was he wanted to be there in the first place. He wanted to be traded, um, and he wants more bump at his position, even though he is technically the starter. But of course, he wants to be paid like a top level back, and he has the talent to be. But you know, injury history and just running backs cost too much right now, or running backs are over the. Uh, Top end running backs are either overpaid or I don't really know how exactly how it works, but I don't think anybody's given 90 million this year. I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't think anybody wants to do it. So, uh, we're just going to have to see where he goes, but I'm assuming he'll be a first rounder for sure. Uh, and then there's a uh, Kenyon Drake to round up the top four running back guys that you should really be looking out for. And, you know, Kenyon Drake. Had a huge breakout guy, breakout season in nine, uh, what, eight weeks, six, seven weeks, eight weeks. So from nine to week nine to 17, he was the third ranked, uh, player in fantasy or in running backs in, uh, fantasy. That's insane. And if I'm sure he's going to stick with the Cardinals, but, uh, it's going to be real, real interesting what he does and what he can do. Next season, when people are more focused on him. Um, so let's move on to wide receivers. Uh, Amari Cooper, who, you know, he's a unrestricted free agent. He's 26 years old. Obvious wide receiver number one talent is there, but it's hard for me to see Dallas letting him go because then that would mean they lost some draft picks for basically a year rental and half a year rental of injuries. So I think they'll re-sign him. I don't know how much he's going to get, but I'm sure he's looking for a big payday. And uh, he finished as wide receiver 10 in 2019, but that could be raised with some, you know, better injury health or better health in general. And, uh, you know, Cowboys scheme with Mike McCarthy. Next is in a well older cat, a more familiar fantasy fellow, AJ Green. Uh, they could franchise tag him. Beware. The Bengals could franchise tag AJ Green, and that would not be probably what he wants, but he could also, you know, he's been rumored. There's been Patriots rumors and stuff like that, so you just gotta be careful. And make sure you stay up with your off-season news. You know, it always comes full circle, right? Always does. Another guy on the list that I'm super interested in is Robbie Anderson. You know, he's 27. Had a really good end of the 2019 season. He was on my fantasy team. I watched him closely 
on his numbers. And I think if he can find himself in a good situation, he could be easily a wide receiver too. Right now, he's kind of on the lower end of a three. Uh, on a bad day, he's a four. So uh, you take that with you will, or take that what you will, rather. And you kind of just have to look at that at face value. But um, there's also another guy, uh, Brashad Perriman, who was also 27, that ended up having a nice end of the season last year due to the injuries of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. But I don't think he'll be super high in any appeals. Um, I don't know where he's going to end up. He is an unrestricted free agent, so... We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, he's kind of in that same level as Zach Pascal, even though he signed a one-year extension with Indianapolis. Uh, those two guys are very similar as far as how I view them in fantasy. They they can go on bursts for a few weeks, but if you're depending on them to have success and you're not even in a super deep league, then your wide receiver situation <laughs> is not good. And to be fair, yes, I am... I'm quote tweeting or quote saying this about myself. My wide receiver situation was not the best last year. And I might have had one of those guys uh, named uh, Pac Zaskel. I think he's, that's what it sounds like on my team at multiple, multiple weeks of the season, hoping for the best. All right. So let's quickly uh, look at some tight ends. Austin Hooper is an unrestricted free agent. Uh, if the Falcons don't resign him, that would not be a smart move by them. Uh, he was the third rank among tight ends, probably behind, of course, you know, Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. Uh, and then there's Hunter Henry, who, depending on who the quarterback is, you never really know what's going to happen. He had a career high in targets, uh, catches in yards, but he did miss some time of injuries, but he'll definitely be a top 10 tight end. Regardless, however, you kind of have to view what is what does top 10 mean because the first two off the list go in the first round. Um, and then quarterbacks, that can get a little bit interesting, as but was, I highly doubt much will change. Dak Prescott is a unrestricted free agent, but the Cowboys are pretty pretty sure they're going to re-sign him to a big deal. Uh, Drew Brees, unrestricted free agent. I don't know what he's going to do. It's rumored that he's really, really considering retiring. He is 41 years of age. Um, it can get real dicey. Tom Brady, unrestricted, 43. Phillip Rivers, unrestricted, 39. These guys are are past the twilight of prime. And they're going to try their... I don't know what they're going to do. I think one of them retires. One of the three is going to retire. I don't know if all three stay in play. I know Drew has a home... Tom Ray is posturing, so the Patriots pretend that they have a home for him. But Bill Belichick has been trying to get off Tom for quite some time. I don't think Tom Brady actually enjoys the fact that uh, this team does not seem to value him as much as he wants to be valued and what he's done for that franchise. But that will wrap it up for um, that segment. And we're going to take another break. And then coming out of the break... We are going to talk about the XFL because football never dies. That's coming up. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. So, the NFL season is done. 
the college football season is done. What does that generally mean? Usually that means football will be done for some odd months, especially televised football at least, will be done until about spring, spring training, spring football for college comes back around, but generally it's done, it's time to watch basketball, hockey if you're into hockey, uh, spring training is coming around for baseball soon, we got some free agency stuff going on, you know, big Mookie Betts deal just came through with the trade to the LA Dodgers. You know, I'm not super, I keep up with baseball a little bit. I'm a Braves fan, but, um, that was a big mega deal that a lot of people were talking about in recent time. However, I digress. Generally, that means football is done, but alas, here we are. Vince McMahon has said no more. Football is here again. More football. And back and better, or trying to be better than what it can be. Trying to make football extremely high-paced, fun, action-packed, thrilling, uh, lead-changing, uh, maybe lack of defensing. <laughs> I don't know. But the XFL is back. You know, previously it was more WWE-esque type drama-filled, uh, didn't really know what exactly was going on with it, but it didn't very last long at all. That went kaput. And then the AAF last year came into existence, and that did not last long at all. Went to kaput. But here is the XFL again, but this time very seriously done. So... They already have Fox behind them. Vince McMahon has put a lot of effort into this, a lot of money behind it, has the backing, has the, has the TV spots. Fox is running Saturday and Sunday XFL and they have eight teams and they have one, a one week playoff and then we have a championship game. Now, I think this will last to the playoffs. And then to the big game. Uh, I think it all just depends on the product of the field. So that's where I guess where I'm getting at. Will I be watching the XFL? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to watch it. Or at least I'm going to watch the first few games. Watch Saturday and Sunday. And I'll give my, my full on thoughts and opinions and takes on, on that, uh, next Friday. And probably Monday on the GSMC football podcast with me and Bryce. Uh, I'm sure me and Bryce will have a lot to say about it. Uh, I guess my worry is that it's not going to be as crisp as the NFL. And it's not going to be as, I guess, exciting and authentic as college football. Because, you know, NFL and college football are two different it can be kind of like two different sports in a sense. I mean, they're the same sport, but they have two different vibes, two different feelings. Uh, and that's not a bad thing if the XFL has a different vibe than both of them, but it has to be, it has to be able to draw enough people. It has to be football like enough to get fans on board. And we don't want to see, uh, I guess a level of football that's just mediocre and it's not good and quarterbacks don't look as good. You know, it's hard, it's, it's terrible to say, but, uh, you know, the NFL is a quarterback league. College football is a, you need a good quarterback to be successful and really push you over the edge. Uh, you need quarterbacks, you need star power, you need guys that are clearly really good. And, you know, the fact of the matter is the thing about college that makes it different than NFL is that, uh, you don't know if they'll be good, the pros, because they're not there yet, but they're good now in college. So, and there's so many college profession, the college teams, college programs, you don't have to worry about the, the idea of, you know, you have to get in the playoffs every year. You have to be competitive. You know, they know you're young and you're learning. And of course, most guys are young, so it's all about potential, potential, potential. Uh, if you're in the XFL, your potential, I guess, is done. 
you've run out of the potential, uh, I guess, the potential bank. You have been, you've maxed out the potential card. Uh, it's declined now. So you've had X amount of chance in the NFL. Uh, you could have practiced God guy or, um, you know, you're on the bench and it just didn't work out. And either you're trying to jumpstart another chance in the league by going here, or maybe you actually believe in this thing and you want to be the one of the parent, the pioneers, pioneers, one of the pioneers of something even bigger and better than what you could really, uh, I guess, imagine and hope for, right? But I don't know how that is going to work out for some guys because. So you kind of have to have the talent to play quarterback at a high level. And these guys are just face it. They have not been able to play quarterback at a high enough level. And a lot of them are not uh, celebrities or big, big name stars outside of general football knowledge. So someone like a Cardell Jones, uh, you would know him if you paid attention to Ohio State football in the past five years because he came from there and he played in some big games, uh, and, you know, did some big time football there. But when he got drafted, um, it didn't, well, he came out late and two, he was compared to Cam because of his size and, uh, I guess arm strength, but, uh, he was not as athletic and he did not have the, I guess the superhuman talents that Cam possessed to really, uh, I guess, change in offense so he really struggled he never really got a chance to start in the nfl but he bounced around a couple teams i remember i think he landed on the saints at some point and then he was kind of out the league and now he's out here at the xfl i guess trying to show people that he still can do it and he can get back to the nfl and you know more power to him i believe everybody should get a chance to do that and that's why it's great to have the xfl and the way I'm going to be trying to watch it, of course, is for fantasy purposes. And outside of that, I want to see if this can be potentially the chance for the NFL to have a supplemental kind of farm system uh, for players in a, uh, I guess, developmental league for players who are underdeveloped or coming out of college. Or players that need more time to, I guess, bulk up or gain weight or, you know, figure things out before they come to the NFL. So that way, um, you know, teams who, who would take a flyer on a guy or they pick a guy at a training camp, um, you know, they don't crash and burn or things like that. And for the guys who are, you know, kind of bust in the first or second round, high draft picks. It can be a place where, um, you know, they get their footing. Because I have a hard time believing they'll be a hot commodity. Like, you know, it will challenge the NFL. Uh, you know, they do have some special rules and stuff. And, uh, we'll get that, we'll get down to that, uh, as the games go on. But I don't think that will be as challenging. And it was just too hard. NFL is a so established. People love the NFL. They just the ratings went up again, and I don't think it'll be going down anytime soon. People love the NFL. People love NFL football. People love the Sundays. People love the Monday nights. The Thursday nights are getting better. People love football and they love the NFL. And when you have established culture in American lives, it's hard to take viewership from that the nba is having a hard time taking viewership back or getting people to retain and watch the games uh mlb is having similar issues it's it's just difficult it's hard to compete with the granddaddy of them all in the sporting world in the united states and that's just the end all be all but i will definitely be trying to watch and i'll give it a try a solid try if it's not good it doesn't catch my interest I suppose I'll drop it unless, of course, fantasy football consumes me <laughs> once again. But uh, we're going to take another break and then we're going to get into the top fantasy XFL players to look at uh, and see just who we need to be looking at to play daily fantasy football for the XFL. That's coming up. 
Are you looking to get your college football fixed? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? The GSMC College Football Podcast is your ticket to all things college football. Join us as we talk college football from the national championship, the college rivalries, the bowl game, to the Heisman Trophy, to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, the Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. Download the GSMC College Football Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. All right, so we're going to take a mosey down Sanduva Road, so to speak, and look at who they believe you should start or sit uh, this week one of XFL. And this is, you know, I've never been in these waters. This is un- unmarked territory. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm some expert that knows who to start and sit in a new league of eight teams, of guys who were not good enough to keep a spot in the NFL. It's just not something I, I'm i familiar with. But I do know some players' names, and I've watched some players. I even had some players in fantasy a few times. And uh, we're going to, you know, go from there and see what we see and how I feel about some of these guys and just what I think they're going to be able to do Saturday or Sunday. Um, So, uh, first person on the list of people are saying to start is Landry Jones, quarterback of the Dallas Renegades, versus St. Louis. Now, I find it funny that St. Louis has already got an XFL team. I can only assume that they're going to be using the old stadium that was tied to the St. Louis Rams. So, at least St. Louis has an XFL team to cheer for already in the works. And hopefully, if the league, you know, continues to grow and get more teams... Uh, we'll see more expansion and they'll be able to have their own. They'll be, you know, the pioneers, the first, the first guys out there. But this guy, Landry Jones, former Pittsburgh Steeler quarterback. And, you know, he, you know, he had some starts here or there, but he, um, the team in general is one of the biggest teams in the in the eight man league as far as odds, and they have a really really good, uh, strong offensive game supposedly, and quarterbacks who are on good teams tend to have good fantasy stats, and that's always a plus. So you're just gonna have to take the numbers game and really think about it. Uh, Andrew Jones was, he was okay. He was not good. He was not great. Uh, he wasn't terrible, but you know, you take him or Mason Rudolph or, uh, Duck Hodges, you know, it's kind of in the same wheelhouse. Um, speaking of the Steelers, Sammy Coates, uh, for the Houston Roughnecks. Now, I had Sandy Co- Sammy Coates in fantasy a while ago. And a while ago, I mean way back, a few years ago. And he was one of those guys who caught super hot fire. Um, and he was a guy that Big Ben was just launching, launching balls to. He was catching touchdowns for a few weeks, and then he kind of cooled off. And then he kind of just sat out for, you know, Pittsburgh likes to recycle, likes to cycle through their... I guess their third option at times, uh, uh, when back when it was Antonio Brown, um, who was it? Uh, I'm blanking on the other guy's name, but it was, uh, Antonio Brown and also, uh, Juju Smith Schuster and, uh, one guy who ended up going to the Raiders. And then I'm sure the name will come back to me. Um, but, It was really, really potent, their offense, and they had the weapons. In fact, the guy who I can't remember their name, unfortunately, um, he did not play because he was was suspended. I remember that specifically, but 
maybe he'll show up in the, in the XFL. But, um, Sammy Coates really did a good job and he was really out there. Um, but it was really the, in 2016, he was, that was the only season he started more than one game. So after that, he was just kind of out of nowhere. But, um, I really think that, uh, it was kind of just, I don't really know. I think he'll, I think he'll find a nice place here. Uh, I think he might be one of the better uh, skill positions out there available in the league besides maybe Antonio Callaway, who we saw play a little bit this year, do some things and we'll just have to wait and see what he's able to do on the field. Uh, uh, and then, you know, they have some guys that they want to sit and here we are. St. Louis battle Hawks. Now that's a name. I like that. The <laughs> St. Louis battle Hawks. Maybe I'll adopt that team for the, until maybe New Orleans or somebody closer down south, uh, gets a team affiliate, you know. But, uh, they're telling us to sit Christian, uh, I always have trouble with this name, uh, Christian Michelle. And he used to play wave all the way back. And he had talent. And people, you know, wanted him. I think he was on the Seahawks. And he kind of lost out uh, to who now uh, is the bell cow for the Seahawks now. Um, he ended up losing the battle. And I guess he just kind of flooded out the league. Because, you know, running backs don't last too long. And if you're not top echelon, if you can't catch well out the backfield, you don't really stay in the league. And the Battle Hawks have picked him up. But uh, most guys think that the Battle Hawks are the, not the best team in this eight-man league. And uh, Michelle, like I said earlier, he never really was a big wide receiver. So if they go down early, uh, his numbers might not look good just because he won't. He can't catch out the backfield, essentially. So they'll be passing the ball more downfield, trying to push the ball. And he won't be in any of the play calls essentially. So that's something to watch out for. Um, another guy that people are telling you to sit is Josh Johnson, who is the quarterback for the LA Wildcats and they'll be playing Houston this weekend. So he is expected to be a game time decision and you kind of don't want to pick him up just because you know, injuries are already one thing, but this guy is 33 years old. Uh, he's only had a few starts in his career since 2009. And the Wildcats are very, very big underdogs in the betting lines. That's just not something you ever want to, you know, mess around with. When the money is saying no, you got to start listening, man. I'm telling you, when the money says no, you really got to, really got to buckle down and start listening. But some guys that, uh, you know, from the NFL that should be interesting watching is uh two quarterbacks that I'm interested in seeing is Aaron Murray, who I've always liked uh coming out of Georgia and Cardell Jones, of course. I want to see what they can do. And then uh I'm still interested in Sammy Coates and Antonio Callaway. We're just going to have to lock it in. So Saturday and Sunday, man, Fox. I'm actually really excited now. I really want to go see what this happens. I hope, hope it does well. I hope the, hope people try to give it what it deserves. And, you know, uh, maybe it's a good little supplement for the lack of football. Or maybe we need a break from football. We'll find out though <laughs> real soon. Uh, so that will be Saturday. They do games differently though. It's, uh, they try to get games done in like three hours instead of four. So it's like, the first game I know on Saturday is two o'clock and then the second game is at five. So they definitely are not trying to hold you there forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> so, uh, I like that. You know, they're not trying to be a uh, marquee NFL Sunday football, you know, not one o'clock, uh, not the four thirties or the, you know, the late starters, you know, they're trying to play around with the windows. I find that. Very nice, actually. But 
we're going to take our final break here and coming out of it, we're going to have some, some fun. So <laughs> I play fantasy a lot. I've played in different fantasy stuff. I play fantasy premier league. I play fantasy basketball, of course, family football. Um, never got into fantasy baseball. Um, not a really big baseball guy back in the day. However, that doesn't mean I don't love fantasy. And sometimes I think other things deserve fantasy sports that maybe not even be considered sports. So that's what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> what, uh, what things outside of the general sports realm deserve the idea of putting a fantasy element around them? That's coming up. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Okay, so to end off the podcast, I thought I should do it on a fun note like I try to do most weeks, and that would be trying to make fantasy sports for different things that are not sports one and two. Uh, it would be a little bit funny. <laughs> so first thing I thought about is grocery shopping. Now, I'm a big fan of grocery shopping, and I love to grocery shop when nobody's around. Because when everybody's around, nobody knows what they're doing. Everybody's just scoundering through the aisles. There's kids around. It's just annoying. But there's something about going to your local grocery store, your Kroger, or your... I don't really go to Walmart. Walmart's not my thing. Too many bright lights. Kroger, it's a nice, warm, uh, tungent light. I like their color scheme. Uh, Walmart's too bright. It's too white in there. I don't shop at Target too much money. <laughs> um, but Kroger, nice, nice bit of, uh, Aldi, nice, nice lighting in there. I don't just choose my shopping by the savings. It's also by the lighting. <laughs> but, uh, grocery shopping, man, it would be so interesting to have a fantasy setting around shopping. Just like fantasy, sports betting. It would be interesting, you know? Imagine. You see, you have a, a, a roster of uh, four. You can draft four people, right? And out of the four pools, you have one. You have the, the soccer mom who has to pick up their kid in 25 minutes. And they have to fill up a whole... I guess, mm, one of those, uh, one of those spiral notebooks. They have a list of items they have to procure. They have a, you know, their family of five, three kids. Uh, and the husband is at work. So she has to handle this in 25 minutes or less. Then on the other side, uh, let's say you're, your kind of running back one or your skill, skill position one. You have your savvy shopper who is the coupon warrior. Boxes or, you know, her purse or, you know, the guy, he has a bunch of coupons. Uh, saves, if he saves like, I don't know, <laughs> $20 off of his off of his uh, original, you know, purchase, he gets extra points or she gets extra points. And then you have somebody else who uh, could be a skill position where they are the wild card. Their shopping cart will always have, you can always have, uh, you get extra points for the categories of items that they get in. So, or maybe the, the number of aisles they walk through. So let's say, 
they're the type of shopper who needs a little bit of everything, but they're also the guy that walks around in the electronics aisle when he knows he shouldn't be out there because there's just too much money in there. He's looking at the games when he knows he doesn't need another game, but he still looks at it anyway. And he's looking at those headphones that, you know, he's saying he's going to replace because he's missing one earbud, but he doesn't actually want to do it. And, you know, he has the money to do it now, but will he have the money to do it later? Uh, and it's always one, one walk away from pulling the trigger. It's kind of like the J.R. Smith of shopping. Um, and then, you know, the guy who's always buying kitchen utensils. <laughs> Is that just something that I've noticed? There's always a guy in there who wants to be a new chef or is trying to up his cooking game in the kitchen. And he'll probably watch a few YouTube videos way too late. And he'll wake up the next day or he'll even take a night trip. And he'll go spend money on... He'll go walk through the kitchen utensil aisle and be like, man, what I need is one of those cast iron skillets. And or what he'll do is he'll get a cast iron skillet, use it a few times, not maintain it. And then he'll see like a wok and be like, man, I want to make some fried rice. I need to be authentic. I need to own a wok. I need to do it the real way. Listen. It's a, it's a real bare bones idea, but I think, I think fantasy football grocery shopping could be, could be interesting. The next thing I could think of has to be in, uh, I guess in sales, something, it has to be numbers related, I guess, suppose. So like sales, but it can't be just any sales because there's sales teams everywhere, but maybe like something unorthodox, something that, you know, could really start the blood fuels going. Something that you can make a reality TV show about. I don't know if you think where I'm getting at, but I know where I'm going because I'm this is my podcast. <laughs> Girl Scout cookies, people selling them, tracking the stats, watching film. Think about this now. So we have these little girls selling these Girl Scout cookies outside of, you know, grocery stores they sell them at the schools you know fundraisers all that stuff let's monitor what how these people are are you know pushing these cookies around (laughs) you know let's see see their tactics who do they talk to are their parents really fueling the work or are they out there hustling and bustling you know they're out there networking they're out there talking their game up uh who's more efficient who's more aggressive when it comes to sales and how does that work on there What's their effective selling percentage aside? What's their true selling percentage? <laughs> We're using advanced basketball terms now. What's their, what's their percentages on this stuff? How do, you know, just pure sales numbers, that doesn't really tell the whole story who's the best because, you know, there's other factors. So if Sally Sue is doing well because she lives in a, upper middle class neighborhood uh, and she just has an easier way of selling Girl Scout cookies because people have more money to spend on them uh, that just sounds like she's in a bigger market that's like saying uh, LeBron is more or not LeBron LeBron's not a good example let's say uh, somebody who is not the best but is in a big market uh, that's like saying I like Jason Tatum, but let's use Jason Tatum as an, as an idea, right? Because Jason Tatum is in a bigger market. He gets more notice for what he does. But are you saying Jason Tatum is better than Brandon Ingram this year, which he has to work harder for, for his baskets because the talent around him is not, not as developed, not as good yet. And, you know, people aren't always watching him and, You know, he has to deal with the fact that the team has 20 turnovers per game. So, you know, selling the cookies is harder because the turnovers are getting out of control and they're not finishing sales. So that means that they're fumbling the bag at some point in this whole transactional period and it's messing up their percentages in the grand scheme of things. But the talent 
how do we assess the selling of this Girl Scout cookie talent? And that's really how far as I got over there. That's, but I'm interested in that one because the numbers, I like numbers when it comes to, you gotta like statistics. Statistics are everything in sports. That's why we like it. It helps us track things. It helps us order things. It helps us rank things. We love ranking things. And I feel like I want to make more of this. I'm going to really sit down and make three more of these. I'm going to come back with this. And it's going to be amazing. Just wait. I think everybody, I think people are underestimating just how, just how much we can get with this. But that's going to be the end of the GSMC fantasy football podcast for this week. Uh, thank you all for listening and subscribing to the podcast. And could you do us all a favor <laughs> and please review us on whatever platform you choose to listen and please follow us on our social media. So that's our Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So this has been <laughs> Ethan Orfe for the GSMC fantasy football podcast. And I hope to see you all next time, next Friday. Peace out. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program